Good morning, St. Thomas More. My name is Mrs. Vesperini Jordan, and I'm the grade 11 guidance counselor, and I have the privilege of walking the process of selecting your courses for grade 12 with you today. But first, I want to introduce two very important role players in your selections. The first one up is a no stranger to you, Mr. Silvestri. And he's gonna speak about an incredible program that our grade 12s have an opportunity to participate in, which is the Bridge Program. And without further ado, I introduce Mr. Silvestri. Good morning, grade 11s. I'm here to talk to you about the Mohawk Bridge dual credit opportunity for next year. If you are a college-bound student and you wanna get a head start on a future diploma, the Mohawk Bridge Dual Credit Program might be right for you. You will gain a hands-on college experience by taking two Mo Mohawk College courses in the afternoon during a semester of your grade 12 year. Those two courses will count as electives for any future program you enter into at Mohawk College. They will also count as two credits towards your high school diploma. Those two course, uh, these two courses are free of charge. Your transportation to Mohawk College is paid for by our board. The spots are limited, so make sure you choose Mohawk Bridge in your course selections for next year. If you have any questions, come by guidance and see Mr. Silvestri. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silvestri. Okay, I'm so excited to introduce the next presenter for you. He is an alumnus of St. Thomas More. He and I served as, well, he was the student council president and I was his vice or grade 11 rep or grade 12 rep. I don't know, but I pretended that I was his vice president. Mr. The one and only Giovanni Angeli is going to speak to you about specialist high skills major and I couldn't be more excited. Sir, it's all yours. Yeah, hi. Uh, <laughs> Miss Vesperini Jordan, everybody. Uh, <laughs> good morning, everyone. I am the Mr. Joe Angeli, and uh, I am the specialist high skills major teacher here at STM, otherwise known as SHSM or SHISM. Why SHISM? Well, are you a student who has no idea or not sure on what to do after high school? SHISM. Are you a student who thinks that they know what they want to do after high school? SHISM. Are you a student that definitely knows the plan you're going with? Well, schism still applies to you. Get used to hearing about this program as this program will not only help you focus and better prepare for your steps next year after high school or the year after, but will also give you an extra edge on the competition you will be facing in the future, whether it be going to college, university, or the workplace. This program really is a no-brainer. It allows you to pick courses that you are already interested in. It requires you to complete a two credit co-op, which gives you invaluable experience in helping you figure out what you want to do after high school. All of you should be considering taking co-op. And it offers you free training and certificates that will look amazing on your resume, like first aid and CPR. At STM, there are six different schism sectors available. They include the arts and culture sector, which involve taking courses in drama, music, visual arts, photography, and communications technology. There's the business sector, which includes courses in accounting, business, leadership, computer science, uh, entrepreneurship, law, and marketing. There's the construction sector, involves courses in construction, technology, exploring computer engineering, manufacturing technology, physics, technological design, and transportation technology. The nonprofit sector, which includes courses like geography, history, law, political science, family studies, raising and caring for children, philosophy and world religion, international business and fundamentals in business leadership. The transportation sector, which includes transportation technology, technological design, computer science, environmental science and physics. And finally, the health and wellness sector, which includes courses in biology and chemistry, healthcare, fitness and kinesiology, food and nutrition, 
healthy, active living, and raising and caring for children. As you can see, these sectors include many, many areas of interest, and hopefully it connects with one of yours. In order to complete the SHISM program, you would need to take co-op. You would have to complete a two-credit co-op. You all should strongly consider co-op, as it is one of the best ways to find out what you want to do, and it looks great on a resume. You would also need to take various certifications and training, including CPR and first aid. Many of the certifications you need for SHISM, you would be taking through co-op anyways. So if you're taking co-op, SHISM is an absolute must. And you would need to take a group of four to five grade 11 and 12 courses, like the ones I just stated, related to your sector. These are called major courses. If you are interested in pursuing a career in any of these sectors, whether your next step after high school is college, university, apprenticeship, or the workplace, you should consider registering into SHISM. Not sure on what sector? No problem. Another nice thing about this program is if you change your mind about the sector you want to go into, you can easily change your SHISM sector. If you are able to complete the program requirements by the time you graduate, your diploma will include the Specialist High Skills Major Red Seal in recognition of your accomplishment, and you will be acknowledged at your graduation ceremony as well. Other benefits of the program, in addition to helping you plan for your future, as mentioned, it's a great resume builder, helping you separate yourself from your future competition. And there are university and colleges that already offer SHISM scholarships and bursaries like Western, Mac, Guelph, York, Lakehead Universities, and Niagara, St. Clair, Loyalist, and St. Clair Colleges. And this list grows every year. How to enroll? One way is through my blueprint. Through my blueprint, you can explore the SHISM program and express interest. When you are on your high school planning page, keep scrolling until you find the SHSM planner. Click on that. From there, you can explore the six sectors we have here at STM and all the courses and certificates available for you to choose from to earn your SHISM. Once you are enrolled, you will also be able to track your progress using the SHSM planner on my blueprint. Another way to register is to come see me, Mr. G, or one of your fabulous guidance counselors in the guidance office. Either way, it's easy. Once you have signed up, I will be assisting you throughout the entire process. Success is not an accident. It is a combination of hard work, commitment, and preparation. One of my favorite sayings is, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. This program is designed to help you prepare for your future. And the best part is that all the certificates and training are free through the SHISM program. Again, this program involves taking co-op. If you're taking co-op, this is a must for you to sign up. If you're not taking co-op, you should strongly reconsider, as not only will it help you gain valuable experience in your potential area of interest, or at least it will help you figure out what you want to do after high school, but it will also allow you to enroll into the SHISM program. Head over to the SHISM Planner and my blueprint, or come see me or your guidance counselors and guidance for information. Plan well, and good luck. Okay, if you're not inspired, then wake up! That was incredible, wonderful news. I think I'm gonna go on to my blueprint and I'm gonna click off Specialist High Skills Major. And I'm gonna click off Mohawk Bridge. I don't know about you. We are going to get to that, but let's begin our little presentation on how to select. We have a new program with us that uh, we need to navigate, and I hope to shed some light on, on that new program. So welcome, my grade 11s, to our option advice presentation for your grade 12 year. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your My site. You have to log in as you know. It's the same page where you would find the bookings icon if you needed a, uh, an, a, an appointment with your guidance counselor. So you go to your My site and then you're going to scroll and find the My Blueprint icon and you can see that on the screen now. Click on that My Blueprint icon. When you get to the, the front page, which is what we call the dashboard, 
click on the left hand side which is your menu and and select high school just like that big arrow is showing you when you get to your high school clearly you're going to select st thomas more then you're going to click on the plus sign for each course that uh, you are preparing to select that you can see on the screen the far right hand side is going to be our grade 12 planning ahead chart you'll see all of it you can also see what you have and have not submitted in red you will be indicated and uh, just a little highlight and a red flag for you to ensure that you do submit when you have completed your course selections. As I just mentioned, once you've clicked on the plus symbol, it's going to open a drop down menu. And with each course that you select, you're going to go through the required courses. The cool thing is, as you, you move up in your grade level, there should be, if you are continuing to pass your courses, there should be fewer and fewer compulsory courses for you to study. And we will touch upon the, the two that are still mandatory as you enter grade 12. So select your English, for example. And then if you click on it, it's going to give you an overview. We understand what our English courses have to offer. But as you approach some of your elective courses, please click on the overview so that you can find a couple pieces of pertinent information. Firstly, an absolute clear definition, description of what this program is that you are about to select. And secondly, as you can see at the bottom of the description for English, what the prerequisites are. So you are responsible for reading this and knowing whether or not you have met the prerequisites or are working towards meeting the prerequisites. Refer to the step-by-step -step guide in my blueprint that helps you identify which courses are best for you and how to go through the process of creating a high school plan. So there's a lot of information, as you are aware, because you did learn how to access and peruse this in your careers course in grade 10. What are our required courses for grade 12 if we successfully passed our compulsory courses throughout each grade level? We only have two left as we enter grade 12. As you know, you are studying in a Catholic school, in our Catholic school board, and the requirement expectation is that you study religion each year you are in high school. So grade 12 religion is considered a compulsory credit. The other one is English, grade 12 English. You may select grade 12 English as a college level course, as a university level course, as a workplace. And remember, if you are selecting it as a university level course, you must have or are working towards completion, successful completion of the grade 11 university level course. A student studying grade 11 college English is not eligible to select grade 12 University English. On top of that, you have a minimum of four electives to select because if you are on track to graduate, then you may actually be eligible to take a spare or two. If we do the math, people, and we multiply eight by four, that gives us 32 credits. And if you have either reached ahead or you have successfully earned each credit throughout your first three years of school, then please talk to me, your guidance counselor, about the selection of possibly seven instead of eight courses working towards a spare or two. 
We don't want to focus too much on that right now. It's much easier to drop a course from your timetable than to add one. There is a new English course for grade 11 that's going to be introduced into the second, excuse me, into the next school year. So if you have not passed your grade 11 English course, this will be the English course that you are going to be studying. The English course curriculum has changed to a First Nations focus course. And the three course codes that are listed on the screen now are what you are going to be required to select if you did not pass grade 11 English this year. So please pay very close attention to the new course code, N B E three. 3U, 3C, or 3E, all still provided for each level and just pay very close attention to that. Thank you. Now, we, we're, I've re mentioned a few times about being on track to graduate. Please, please review your graduation summary. You can find it under the graduation indicator and you're just going to click the view progress tab as indicated by the yellow arrow. When you click on the View Progress tab, you're going to have access to all of the courses and credits that you have studied and earned. And you'll be able to see what is still outstanding. You're going to see the, the tally of credits that you have earned, what you still need to earn, and in what department or subject area. Many students have asked, even from grade nine on, should I reach ahead? If you're thinking about grade 12 being a bit heavy, maybe you have three different science subjects you want to continue to pursue. There may be two or three math courses that you need, to, you need to pursue as it relates to some of the programs of study post-secondary, then consider taking a summer school course. But please note that Ministry of Education requires full disclosure, meaning all of your grade 11 and your grade 12 final marks and every attempt made to earn a credit in these courses is disclosed to all schools that you apply to, both college and university, when we begin our application process. And our application process will be a whole other presentation. Next week, I will likely offer a couple workshops over the lunches on how to begin the research into your college and university programs. Consider your destinations. Are you university bound? Are you studying the core courses at the URM level? What does that mean? Is your English especially at the U level? Or is it at the C or is it at the workplace? That is going to determine a pathway for you. If you're college bound, you still may be studying M level math, that's great. But if your English is at a C, then you will be applying to college bound courses and programs. Workplace bound, obviously work, work experience is really, really important for you. If you have not selected co-op, please, when you are selecting your courses for this upcoming year, indicate that co-op is something that you would like. GLD and GLN are supported co-ops. And those placements usually take place within our school and there are one credit co-op often if, if um, that is something that you would like to pursue, please come to student services and speak with any of our co-op teachers. And finally, if you are apprenticeship bound, you want to pursue a skilled trade and there is always work for skilled trade journey men and women. Co-op in grade 11 would have benefited you we can continue to pursue that 
into the summer and into grade 12. Ontario Youth Apprentice Program is another incredible program that some of you are already en route to pursuing. What are your university requirements? As I mentioned, next week I'm going to host a couple really brief workshops on how to utilize this website, ontariouniversitiesinfo.ca. When you click onto that website, you have access to every single university program offered in every Ontario university. And you are highly encouraged to begin perusing that site because there are programs offered that we don't even know about. So we want you to make sure that you are researching everything possible before you begin your application process next year. 3U level sciences are prerequisites for 4U sciences. So if you aren't taking 3U sciences, please ensure that for the summer or we can work on putting the 3U into semester one of your grade 12 year. University admissions. This is a big one and we talk about it frequently. I love the number of students who have already come to me, my grade 11 students who are already inquiring about what it takes to apply successfully to university and to college. For university bound students, by the time you are in grade 12, you must have a minimum of six grade 12 U or M courses. And those must include any specific prerequisites that you're going to learn about by going on to the Ontario University's info.ca site. Please note that most averages of your six, which include English for you, must be above 70%. So you're taking your six best and don't worry, the application center does all of the, these computations, but you better ensure that you are averaging above 70% to have a chance at getting into a university in Ontario. And finally, ensure that you have the requirements for each program. College requirements are a little less daunting. Both grade 11 college and grade 12 college courses will be considered as prerequisites for college programs and you're going to go on to the ontariocolleges.ca website to access the information about every single program that is running in every Ontario college. And by visiting that site, you will be able to learn about the specific requirements for each program that you are interested in. Note that many collaborative programs are also offered through colleges where they work hand in hand with local universities. Finally, some students want to head off to university but are studying in a different stream or the marks aren't necessarily there right now. Can you move on to university eventually? Absolutely. Your pathway can change. And note that there are transition and or transfer opportunities once you study a college program. You will be able to transition over into university. All is not lost, people, but our pathways sometimes take a couple different jaunts along the way. Make sure that we together are properly planning for not only your selections for next year, but for some career pathways. Utilize your My Blueprint and all of the experience you have had in the past. Get back to that individual pathway plan that's found in your My Blueprint. Use all the information that you've learned in your career studies. Start by planning your post-secondary destination, paying very close attention to, as I've mentioned, what the prerequisites are for your potential academic pathways. And yes, it is still possible to change that pathway, keeping in mind that the English stream level is 
by far the most important that will dictate your initial pathway into post-secondary. And you know that you are welcome to make an appointment to discuss any of these concerns and goals with your guidance counselor, yours truly. Personal planning chart, as was mentioned earlier, go through that chart, make sure you are selecting your religion and English. Religion is also offered as an M, and when offered as an M, it definitely can help uh, improve your average of your best six courses because it will be considered as a university eligible course. Here's our specialist high skills major and co-op. Mr. G made an incredible presentation about specialist high skills major. Here's a brief note on the sectors that he already spoke about. It is not too early or too late to register. And of course it goes hand in hand with our co-op program. Included in this, I want you to also keep in mind, I'm actually gonna back up. In this planning chart, if you are college bound, I want you to write down into that planning chart the bridge program where you actually get to experience college life as a high school student. And that you is something that you can discuss in detail with Mr. Silvestri. We also need to note again, and I've spoken about this as grade 10s and grade 11s to you about the ministry's e-learning graduation requirement. The requirement is that you earn two credits in e-learning courses. And what we have to keep in mind is that they are not the courses that we were all relegated to studying during the COVID lockdown days. Virtual school, is not considered e-learning courses in the eyes of the Ministry of Education. So these e-learning courses are separate. Many of you exercised your option to opt out of being held accountable. If you have not done so and would like to, come to Student Services and we will issue that document for you and a parent to sign off on and then once that is filed you will not be held accountable come graduation. If it's something that you do want to pursue, we have courses running in our school and we also collaborate with other schools in our school board where you can sign up for an e-learning course. Scroll right down to the bottom point. If you choose to complete the two e-learning e courses outside of day school, then the courses must be asynchronous, so not live, and they are not part of your virtual school experience if you are a virtual school student. Whoa, I know there's a lot here. I'm just going to highlight a couple points. What are all of our graduation requirements? Well, in order to earn your diploma, which is your Ontario secondary school diploma, OSSD. You're going to see that on the descriptors in your college and university programs when you start researching those. We know we need 30 credits. 18 of those are compulsory, 12 are elective. Inclusive in those 30, you have to ensure you've earned at least one credit in the arts, at least one credit in physical education, at least one additional credit in the next three groups. I'm giving you an opportunity to read those. I'm not reading all of this. We have posters that are hanging in student services. We have little cards that you can come and read through. This information is also on your My Blueprint. But please note that group one is fulfilled naturally by the grade 11 religion course as it is a world religion studies course. If you do not see anything in your groups two and three that you believe you have studied an additional course in, then come see me and we can line up your plan for next year to ensure that you're meeting groups 
two, and three. As I just spoke of, there are the two e-learning credits. Additionally to those academic requirements, we have 40 hours of Christian community service. 40, you're not exempt of any of those hours. Please ensure that you are working towards those hours at this point. The last thing you wanna be doing is scrambling to find opportunities in your grade 12 year. And finally, passing the literacy test or passing the Ontario literacy course in order to fulfill the final requirement for graduation. Once all of these are met, you are going to be an Ontario secondary school graduate. What are our registration requirements for the upcoming grade 12 year? Please note that all your registration components will be due March 2nd of this year. You must complete your course selections on my blueprint. The activity fee has changed from 45 to $50. A receipt must be available for us to, to ensure that that activity fee has been paid. Now please, when doing so, ensure that you are paying for the appropriate year, which is the 2023-24 year on School Cash Online. Verification of your registration form must also be downloaded with any updates to personal information. That's all we have. I'm going to back up my beautiful grade 11s. It's a scary time because you're thinking about your future and that's okay to be nervous, but know that there are many of us under this roof that are here to discuss your plan and your pathway and know that if it changes, it's not a big deal. We can make those changes. Work hard this semester. Make the right decisions. Your academics and your success are going to pave beautiful pathways for your post-secondary experience. Have a great day today and know that you are loved.